Thank you. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Matthew Kaufman, a senior biology major here at Berks. Uh, Matt has been performing research in my lab for the past two years, and during this time has developed into an inquisitive, determined, and dedicated researcher. To say that Matt is engaged on the Penn State, uh, Penn State Berks campus is an understatement. Um, most people on campus know Matt. Um, he could even be considered Penn State Berks royalty as he was voted homecoming king by his peers earlier this year. Um, but no matter whether he is serving as a teaching assistant in a chemistry class, uh, tutoring in the Learning Center, raising money for pediatric cancer, or giving a campus tour as one of our learning ambassadors, he would always prioritize his lab work and his research project. Regardless of how many times I told him he had to repeat that one pesky experiment, or grind up another set of flies, or even help me remake lab solutions and I accidentally dumped water all over him. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> um, yes, that did happen. Um, he would do it all with a smile. Uh, Matt produced very high quality data on a challenging research project during his time in the lab. And he presented these results at two international scientific conferences, the Drosophila Research Conference, and yes, there is an entire conference devoted to people who study fruit flies. Um, and um, this year, the Allied Genetics Conference, um, and in fact, his research at this year's conference was chosen for a presentation that's only given to about 20% of the research that's submitted. And this is impressive for an undergraduate as they are almost never chosen for to do this. Matthew Kaufman, young investigator recipient for the Division of Science, will now present to you his research titled Low Carb Flies, Analyzing Blue One in the Fly Brain.
What we see when we do that is that flies that have decreased glucagon in their brain store less triglycerides across their whole entire body, uh, which is what is shown here in this graph. What is also interesting is that flies with less glucagon in their brain also store less glycogen across their whole organism. This brings up a couple of interesting hypotheses as to why exactly this is occurring. When we eat, the food we eat is broken down into glucose, which goes on to be stored as triglycerides and glycogen. What I have shown you is that fries with less food one have less triglycerides and glycogen storage. So a reasonable hypothesis would be that they're eating less. So our next investigation was to look at the feeding behavior of the fries with less food one in their brains to see if they're eating less. And what we see when we do that is that flies with less food one in their brain have no changes in their feeding behavior. They're not eating any less. This tells us that decreasing glucose in the brain is causing some is causing something else to go a little awry, leading to the decreased triglyceride and glycogen storage being better. In humans, our pancreas has similar glucose transporters that take up sugars to tell the rest to, to secrete insulin to lead to increased triglyceride and glycogen storage. Like I showed you earlier, fruit flies have a lot of similar metabolic. They too have, an ins uh, have a pancreatic-like organ. What's interesting is that this pancreas-like organ is actually found in their brain and is coined insulin-producing neurons. So it works the same way. These neurons detect sugar through the glucose transporters to secrete insulin to go on to increase triglyceride and glycogen storage across the whole animal. So we hypothesized that these decreases in triglyceride and glycogen storage would result in decreased insulin in these neurons. So our next question was just that. Do glute one knockdown flies have less insulin? And what we do when we invest, what we see when we investigate that is that glute one fly, glute one flies that have less glute one in their brain overall produce less insulin, which is quite interesting. This data then helps to support this model, where glute one in the brain cell membrane focuses to let glucose into these cells. Glucose entering these cells then tells the rest, then tells these neurons to secrete and produce insulin, which is then again secreted from these neurons to go on to affect triglyceride and glycogen storage across the whole animal. So why exactly should you care about fly obesity? A couple of reasons. Like I said earlier, we have very similar glucose transporters in our bodies as do the fruit flies. So understanding how GLUT1 functions to regulate triglyceride and glycogen storage in the fruit fly will tell us how glucose transporters work in the human to regulate triglyceride and glycogen storage. This information then will go on to tell us how to treat and prevent metabolic diseases such as obesity. So today I showed you that decreasing GLUT1 in the brain leads to decreased triglyceride and glycogen storage. Perhaps creating a drug that targets various glucose transporters across our body will help to fight against the pathogenesis of I would of course like to thank Penn State Berks for providing the outlets to conduct this research. Um, my lab uh, for supporting me, being a great time, and of course letting me compare them to fruit flies. And then again, Cohen Hamilton.